really funky going on with our bracket here in the capital division. It's seeds one and two in the winners' finals. It's Howard Community College and George Mason going head to head. We just got to watch Howard Community College go 3 1 over UONA. Granted, it took two OT games, one of which they lost, uh, but and it was a, a very tightly contested game, whereas GMU had a solid 3 0 over Shenandoah. But still, uh, I think, you know, we're in, again, we're in for a very good game. And it's looking really nice here coming up for uh, our winners finals matchup. Yeah. And it has been, uh, I'll tell you what, Howard Community College has been making some strong arguments today for them deserving that number one seed. I mean, the, the control of the ball they've had in the air, the rotations, the constant offensive pressure has been something else. We didn't get to see, though, we didn't get to see GMU versus uh, Shenandoah with that 3 0. So, we could be looking at something a little bit, uh, a little bit similar to that, or, or something just as scary at the very least. We did see GMU play against ODU Blue a little bit earlier on, and they were looking very strong there. And honestly, I mean, if you look at the standings here, Sh- uh, Sh- uh, GMU Patriots had the bye. Shenandoah had taken the three zero over ODU Blue. I'm sorry, my, my apologies, I got that mixed up. But then GMU took the three zero over Shenandoah, so that's uh, you know, took a team undefeated in the first round took no losses in the first round, took no losses beating them to get here. So this could be uh, this could be a dangerous match, could go either way, but we're going to find out right now. Players are loading in. So let's get ready for game one of GMU Patriots versus Howard Community College Dragons. Yeah, and I think something that we, uh, you know, should note yet again is these both teams, both these teams, excuse me, are seven and two as a, uh, Wow. Whoa. Okay. Four seconds in, George Mason is up 1 0. Um, so that's kind of how this is going, huh? What a um, start. Yeah. I was not at all expecting that. I was about to just go in and explain that, you know, Shenandoah and GMU were both 7 2. Uh, Shenandoah had a very solid, comfortable showing over ODU, and they got apparently dismantled 3 0. So. You know, very strong come uh, game for GMU to come off of here. And likewise, I mean, a, a little bit, you know, of a, not a struggle necessarily, but a, a much closer game from HCC. Like we said, they had two OTs, one of which they lost. And, you know, they, they only really blew the doors off of UONA in game four. So... If, uh, if GMU can really continue and bring in a lot of pressure, I think HCC is going to uh, going to really be scared of this one. Yeah, with that start, GMU is trying to hold on to this undefeated playoff performance so far and stick to not dropping a game. But we still got a whole lot of set to play to make that happen. And it looks like Howard Community College is starting to come online here, starting to gain a little bit more control of the ball there. In that offensive scoring position we saw for so much of their previous match, but can they keep that up versus number two seed GMU? Or is GMU going to get them a little more trouble keeping that kind of pressure going? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how, you know, both sides really compare with this pressure. Both HCC trying to build theirs back up after this early loss or early uh, goal given up, excuse me. Whereas GMU is going to have to both compete with HCC's heavy aggression as well as generating and, and maintaining their pressure. And clearly, HCC is going to get the better of them this time around. We're tied back up 1 1 within another minute of play. Yeah, and we're seeing a, a repeat of the, uh, the Howard Community College firing line here, where that ball just does not pass the midfield mark for exp- extended periods of time while HCC takes shot after shot on goal. But, you know, we saw GMU a little before that set up a similar situation and keep control for quite a bit as well. So this is, uh, they're very evenly matched, I feel, as far as their offensive capabilities go. It may just be a battle of uh, who can maintain possession at this point. It's really funny that you call it a a firing line because that's really what it feels like. I, I know you went in on that, but I mean, HCC just continues this barrage and continues this pressure and only now the past couple of seconds have they you know relented and 
given up the pressure to George Mason here. But now, once again, they're back on it. And they're already scoring off of it. HCC was doing this very well in game four of their matchup against UONA. You know, they were getting pressured a lot in their defensive end. and But they were contesting their, these shots and defending them well. And in their limited offensive play, they were coming alive in short bursts necessary and scoring hard. And that's why they've got the lead back here with less than half the game to go. Oh, look at Noble trying to set up that double tap off the backboard. Not quite going to find it, but Arrow there at the redirect. JK going to intercept that way over midfield. GMU has found itself an opportunity, possibly. But, man, look at the defensive play even coming out from, from Howard Community College right there. Even with GMU getting an opportunity to get that ball downfield for a moment, they just weren't able to keep it down there. And it's already back over the uh, GMU side of the board here. Wow. Just so much pressure coming out. GMU is going to have to make goals with very little, very little opportunities. They're, they're going to, have to make the most out of every little slip they can get because otherwise the control that Howard's putting out right now is just, uh, just looks so formidable. Yeah, they are keeping up the pressure and the defensive pressure from logs and trees or rather the defensive release valve of that pressure is just being fantastic for them so far. Another demo, hopefully for HCC's side, they can create some pressure and presence off this again, but it looks like they're gonna opt into controlling around this midfield and really working around there instead. But again, I mean, the aerial control from this team has been stellar in both this game and in their game against UONA, and they are doing fantastic off of that early, early goal. You know, five five seconds into the game or whatever it was, excuse me. Um, since then, GMU has been completely shut down by this HCC defense. Yeah, and I think something that goes a long way towards explaining both HCC's success on the offense and their uh, very limited... Uh, missteps that uh, that provide scoring opportunities is just mm -hmm. how effective they've been at with challenges i mean i feel like just every time there's a clear there's a play up field towards hcc side someone on hcc is making a challenge and making that challenge successfully uh that is not easy to maintain that kind of success rate as i say at logs and trees does with one gmu's got an opportunity here they got seven seconds they gotta make this shot titanium trying to follow up but Noble has the save off of the backboard, but take it way down the field here and crush GMU's hopes of going into overtime here in game one. Yeah, the air ball is uh, still while inside, fully in GMU's side. Doesn't matter in the end. Howard Community College strikes first, despite being down within five seconds of the game starting. It's uh, dominant all the way forward for HCC. They, I think, only let up two shots, and those both were from JK there, as a Titanium's one shot should be the one goal that he had. But still, I mean, a lot of offensive control for the side of Howard out shooting GMU despite the early deficit, and, and they just kept the ball rolling there. And so going into this game too, it'll be uh, very tough to see if they can really, how they're, or rather how GMU is going to come back and really get through the hole or get a, find a hole through the defensive pressure as Logs is going for a double demo off the bat here. That is just a vicious way to start game two. Double demo off the bat and uh, already resulting in HCC taking pretty reliable uh, control of the ball here. Oh, but maybe overstep just a little bit noble. Just in position has a perfect uh, set to set that ball off center. But so far, it is still HTC's game off the start of this game, too. Here, GMU is really gonna have to fight to get control of this ball back. Oh, JK, though, able to set it through, not able to finish up the goal, but finds that hole in the HTC offense, puts them on notice. As they are not necessarily invincible on that ball offense. Titanium with a double challenge there. Setting up JK perfectly for another one, sending it off the ceiling. 
but not able to follow up. Titanium keeps the ball in play, but HCC does manage to weasel it out, send it way back down the field. JK, ha JK has an amazing save on the way back on that rotation. And now we're seeing a lot more back and forth. No more of this invincible HCC scoring line. This is now uh, this is an even game as far as possession of the ball and control of the ball has gone so far this game, too. Yeah, and it feels like any time the ball goes deep into someone's side of the field, it's, uh, you know, really just into these corners and then gets batted out immediately. There's no proper offensive control being generated by either of these teams, and that's to the benefit of the defenses. Two demos coming out sec or right side by side here for the side of HCC, and they're still not able to capitalize until just now, but there it goes, and in it goes. Logs and trees will tap it on in off the help of Arrow, and a huge goal to open things up here for HCC as they are looking to continue the pressure that they were creating in game one here. Something I want to call back to, I talked about a little bit earlier in the night when we were watching the game ones, was, you know, you wanted to not give away everything you had in the back pocket, but also without, you know, giving up the game and end up getting sent to the loser's bracket. And I think that something you were seeing in spades here in this winner's finals match, we were not seeing these double demo plays come out from HCC earlier. They were able to win the game in spite, without making those kinds of plays. Now that we're seeing a team like GMU step up and really contest control the ball, really break through that firing line offense and make it a back and forth game as far as position on the field, now you're seeing the HCC reach in and start to pull out some, uh, some, some a little bit different strategic uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, anchor points in their gameplay. And you are seeing those demos start to come out when they need to make a clear advantage, when they need to break up that back and forth 50-50 midfield game and reestablish that firing line. Yeah, really just trying to continue this pressure, I think is the, the name of the game for HCC. And again, like I said early on, Trying to find a hole here for GMU is their main focus. Currently, they're pressuring heavily on the offensive side, but they're not able to get through this solid defense. Lots of saves from logs and trees. He's doing work in front of the net alongside Arrow. And now, yet again, the ball is in the offensive control of HCC. They are not going to stop and not going to let up here in this last minute. And it's really up to some big aerial play coming in from GMU to just try and alleviate this Ooh. offensive pressure that HCC keeps pushing up. And HCC was having a taste of their own medicine there for a little bit with GMU setting up a pretty solid, consistent offensive pressure with that offensive line. But uh, an unfortunate double whiff while keeping that pressure going gave HEC a chance to break through. And that, uh, boy, that really set GMU back quite a bit here in this last game. They really need to make this last point here and at least get that 1-1 to take it into overtime. If not, uh, take a little bit further. Dev's going to not quite make that save, but JK is in position. Arrow waiting for it to fall, but it's going to bounce over him. And Dev is trying to send that way down the field. Titanium not able to make the catch with JK. <laughs> Just uh, already here in waiting for that follow-up. But a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too reliant on JK to still be there and keep making these saves. Gets tackled off of the ball by HCC and opens up a clean open net for Logs and Trees. Really good defensive play yet again. And it's these short burst offensive opportunities from HCC that again, we saw that at the end of UONA's game. We saw it at the end of, or the beginning of this Ooh. game. And now it's starting to unravel a little. GMU's gonna get, hopefully get going with these last 30 seconds as JK puts a nice self bounce into the net. 35 seconds and at least it's not another shutout, but HCC is still up two to one here. And they've still got a good oh, no. bit of control into this one. Logs with not the right position on that shot. He could have had something else, but you know, in the end, it's just more aerial defensive play from HCC. JK keeping the dream of this game too alive, but then there's only 10 seconds left now. They have got to make this play, and they got to make it right now. Arrow in position to take a shot and try to shut that down. 
They may not be getting scored on, but can they make the score back themselves? Off the backboard, there is one chance here. What an angle off to the side. Titanium making the catch. It's up. JK tries to make it, but only able to set it straight on against the backboard. Not quite enough momentum to the side to make that goal. Howard CC going to go up 2-0 in the set. And let me tell you, Jay, man, it was it was looking like JK maybe had that opportunity there, put the hope of taking it to overtime right back into the team there with that score at the 35 second mark. And just as quickly, it was, I feel like just as quickly it was taken away. They were, uh, they, they had position of the ball off the kickoff off of that. And then just one unfortunate whiff Howard CC pouncing on that opportunity with everything they had. They may not have been able to corral that into another score, but they didn't need to. They just needed to maintain that one point lead. And now they've got the two, Point, the two game lead in the set one more and they're advancing the grants yeah and i think something to note that's pretty big uh for gmu in that game titanium had no shots no saves and just zero impact it felt like in that game whereas in the first game obviously he had the goal off the bat and then again he was shut down titanium i'm not sure if he is a key player for george mason but when you're in t teams as small as three on three, any player not contributing a, their part is pretty massive. So we'll get to see, hopefully Titanium start things back up, really work back into this game and in favor of, of working out with his team. But still, I mean, the, the control from HCC is coming out even though the ball is in their side of the field yet again to start things off. All that pressure is for naught because instantly they're back in control. Yeah, and, and off the bat there, we saw Titanium make a pretty impressive challenge off of the wall to keep that offensive pressure going. So I think Titanium may also uh, be stepping things up here just a little bit this game too. Dev trying to set up that shot there, not able to find a Titanium the one to find the rebound, though. Put that first point on the board and break up that drought that you were talking about. Taking GMU up one point in the set, or in the game. Yeah, another early titanium goal. This one took about a minute and a little bit, a little bit of change, but still works out in favor of GMU. Oh. Demo off the bat as well is going to be able to uh, generate some more pressure. But now that he's involved, act excuse me, actively and really getting his car on the ball, Titanium is doing good work for George Mason here and just denying a lot of pressure from the side of Howard whenever they're trying to work these aerials and work into George Mason's side and then converting that into good offensive play. Cherish, I think Titanium heard you... Uh... Heard you talking trash there a little bit. I said, all right, Mr. Commentator, you want to see some Rocket League? Let me show you some <laughs> Rocket League here in game three. Yeah. Well, JK taking it up off the ceiling. Dev going to try to follow it up. Sends it right up to the pocket. So much distance in all of it. Airtime, but Arrow is able to make the catch. He's sending it right back with the air dribble. The challenge, the ball taken off of him. Titanium able to make the layup. Shot on goal, but JK's in position to block. So much pressure going out. Titanium throwing it in reverse. Tuna trying to make that a lot of reverse coming out here from GMU. Yeah. Slowly but surely, GMU is tightening the noose as well. They're getting a lot of shots on goal and controlling the pace of this matchup. They have not let HCC, you know, that little firing line Ooh. style that we mentioned, they're not letting it up an inch. And because of that, finally, GMU will go past that one goal tally. They will get a second on the board. And with half the game to go, they are up 2-0 while down two games to none, trying to salvage this series without going to losers. It was an incredible recovery, too, because we did see a lot of GMU having to pull the car in reverse to make some of those saves. And let me tell you, Rocket League players do not like to drive backwards. Uh, it is not <laughs> as easy to control your car. You don't get nearly as much, much muscle momentum. You can't boost. Uh, it puts you in a weird spot if you have to jump and make a, sa a save backwards. It is not a, uh, by any means, a convenient situation if you're having to put the car in reverse. But not only did they survive the situation, they were able to pull out of it, rally, and make it the goal. And now they're up 2-0 and showing they're still alive in the set. This is by no means over. 
JK with the challenge, the 50-50, kills the ball on the spot. It looks like it's opened up an opportunity here for GMU, but Noble, uh, Noble sending it right over. JK sending it right over back. We are just back and forth with these big high aerials right across this median line here on the field. Boy, we're just we're just sniping shots like long distance the whole way. These just hail Mary across the board. Logs and trees have to make awkward shadow defense there and titanium in perfect position to redirect it. It's gonna be off the crossbar, but Dev redirects it off of that. Bounces it right back, finds the score. There was just so much action in those 30 <laughs> seconds. There was just so much and that ball was we we must have had that ball just about an inch's clearance off the ceiling. Maybe 15 times in as many seconds? Yeah. Oh, I almost thought that one was going to roll towards the goal. Not just quite Ooh. yet, as uh, we've eclipsed 3-0 now with about a minute to go. And it just feels like any control that uh, George Mason has, has tried to create, or rather, excuse me, that uh, HCC has tried to create, it's non-existent. Any, you know, there's two guys in goal, almost three, in favor of George Mason. And now they're back on the offensive all ready. Titanium off the top backboard. It's going to get denied and then demoed right away. So hopefully for HCC, they can get something going. But just the disruption play from George Mason has been solid all game. And they're able to deny a lot of control from HCC more so than they did in the previous two games themselves. Yeah, and Titanium made that play with every last drop of boost in the tank, too, and just wasn't quite enough to make it. But at this point, Titanium doesn't need to make another score. The team is up 3-0. They really just got to keep this ball going, keep the runaround happening, and just let that clock time out to take this game and keep this set alive. There's really not a whole lot that they got to do here. Of course, you know, if there's a little extra flair, uh, maybe a possible goal, they're going to take it just to prove the point that they can, and they absolutely can, Titanium catching it off of that rebound from the ceiling and taking a nice leisurely Sunday drive with it, the open net. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it did still go 30 miles an hour into the net, but uh, still, I mean, that's probably one of the slowest goals we've seen yet. As uh, one second to go, the clock will time out. We'll see if HCC can put something Look. in. But what a Cherish. dominant comeback. I mean, 4 nothing. All I can say is, is Cherish, I live in Maryland. 30 miles per hour, is that's a leisurely Sunday drive. All right? We we, we drive fast in the state, okay? We we, uh, we we do be holding those gas pedals down just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But Don't what worry. a performance in game three. The 4-0 to keep the set alive. And now, man, the pressure is on. You cannot give up a game to keep that to uh keep your chances of going to winner side of grand finals alive but if they can keep it up like that game three it's absolutely doable oh but howard community college is out for blood off of the kickoff logs and trees then it went right up the center not quite gonna make the shot there but putting gmu on notice in the first 10 seconds of the match yeah and great pass up to arrow on the wall off the backboard, but a missed aerial by both Noble and Logs is actually going to spell almost doom off the top crossbar, but Logs has made his recovery all the way on back. No goal allowed by the main defenseman here for the side of HCC. And now with a nice demo from Logs, HCC is going to continue their pressure. Pass up the side from Noble is going to create some space but back in favor of george mason it goes and this is continuous you're right hcc is very much out for blood in this matchup here already in this game four to really try and avenge that game three blowout but i mean they are still not in a a great place and gmu is doing very very well to manage but Noble boast, boosting, excuse me, just over the top of JK on the defense. Cute little pass oh. from Logs, getting Noble the little bit of a boost here over top of JK. And HCC is ready to go in this game four. 
Long just kind of really faked out the defender, too. It wasn't even so much a pass as it was a, I'm just going to leave this here, not <laughs> send this towards goal for the defender. Let him freak out about it. And then somebody else uh, finished it up, and Noble coming through to do exactly wow. that. And then Noble coming through to repay the Give favor the right and over to Logs and Trees. Yep. You know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, gotta repay the favor there. <laughs> Definitely do have to give that one on back. So we'll be seeing now as 2-0 uh, goes our score. HCC in dominant fashion here. Logs just continuing his aerial prowess in front of the net. Least oh. Dev, uh, excuse me, Dev and uh, I forget who, Titanium. Wow. Can forget, I couldn't remember the name all of a sudden. Devin Titanium are continuing some offensive pressure, but... Oh, oh the uh, tackle keep, uh, the off of the ball. ball. That is, you know, that, there's two ways to take possession of the ball off the other team, all right? You can you can take the car off of the... Or you take the ball off the car, or you can take the car off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some, sometimes you aim the ball, sometimes you just, you just run it right into that car, man. You just make that collision happen. That bump and demo play, you do love to see it. Wow, yeah. Big line drive here. Noble. In position, Titanium going to send it back. It's a perfect angle. There was a little bit of a double commit on the defense there from Howard Community College. Both Noble and uh, another member of the team, Arrow, trying to make that same save, and that opened up exactly the gap Titanium needed to take that shot. Yeah. With that said, first goal for the side of George Mason, the only shutout still being that game three. So as long as, uh, it seems like as long as HCC is the first one to get going with things in terms of goal, rather if they're able to score a goal, they are in good shape for themselves. But obviously when they can't, you know, that, that is pretty obvious, but still, I mean, the two, the three games so far that we've seen them score, They've been in dominant control. They've almost entirely been winning the game on their own. And they're they're stomping it. And the game that, you know, they didn't score. They had very little ball control. And a nice was that? logs off the top of, I think, JK, honestly. Oh, no. that was a pool shot, Dev. Kind of like we were talking about earlier. You know, you can take the ball off the car. You can take the car off the ball, but... Instead, Dev sending the car into the ball at <laughs> just the right angle to set up a redirect. That is one of those uh, that's one of those final destination type of goals. You know, that was yes. uh, a Rube Goldberg machine type yeah. play there. Really, just going through as many uh, as many different possibilities as they can here with that. Era's looking for more too, by the way. Just HCC is, is primed and ready to win this one out. And this is just unrelenting. They are not giving up any pressure. They are continuing to keep it in George Mason's side of the field. And further, the redirect from just, Titanium. Oh, so they're close. really oh, 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 Noble just denying the second redirect by Dev. This is crazy shooting from both sides so far. Uh, everyone's saving their wildest shots for the back minute of game four here. We're seeing it all come out at the same time. I am amazed that ACC was able to manage to keep the defense going through that. That was some incredible offensive play coming out from GMU, but even that just wasn't quite enough to get the scores they needed. Time is running out, but one good pinch. Fate took the goal away a little bit earlier, but it gave it right back here at the bottom 30 seconds. This is not over, but they got 30 seconds. They got to make or break right now. GMU on the line, on fighting for their lives in this set. Yeah, we'll get to see now. 30 seconds to go. The goal gap is just one so far. Hopefully for GMU's sake, they can control things back in their favor. But the defensive logs, he's been denied a little bit on this one, but... That doesn't matter because he's still got two teammates to go. Noble and Logs in midair. His aerial control in front of this net and the defense-mindedness from him is just insane. As the ball will clear out, Dev trying to put that one up. 
but it's been stopped in front of the net logs and arrow doing their best to deny everything oh. and tmu cannot put it in hcc will take this one three to one a great combat game off the back of the 4-0 win for gmu and it was just stellar play from the side of hcc for most of this game and that's what's net them a spot in our grand finals and you know howard community college had to be sweating there in those last 10 or 15 seconds or so because man gmu made so many close shots and so much pressure right there at the very end but howard community college able to keep it together hold the line and not let that goal slip through not let that overtime situation happen and they will be advancing to our grand finals and yeah. incredibly well played incredibly deserved that means that uh our gmu patriots will be moving down to the losers bracket well they'll be waiting for the uh the winner of i yeah we actually yeah. don't know yet we're gonna find out in just a minute i was i was waiting for my bracket to load there my apologies but yeah <laughs> it's like uh UNA and ODU Blue are still finishing up, and the winner of that moves on to Shenandoah University. Is that correct? 